to keep you guys updated about our own upcoming fragrance release, which you guys can get your hands on in a few weeks time. Here it is, Mr. Fragrance by our brand Atrium Fragrance. In this video, guys, I wanted to share the note breakdown onto the screen here. What do you guys think? Looking at these notes, how do you think our fragrance would smell? We have notes that smell like blue fragrance mixed with green. Today we have six of the lowest rated fragrances on Fragrantica. Now, they may not be the absolute lowest rated, but they're popular fragrances that are more mainstream, that have a low rating. And if you guys don't know what Fragrantica is, it's the biggest fragrance review website out there that lets you know a lot of information about each fragrance that exists in a big database. Now, do these fragrances deserve the hate that they get? Sometimes yes, and sometimes no. Two out of six of these fragrances here today are gonna to be YouTuber fragrances, and I feel like there are gonna be some inevitable haters for every YouTube release. I'm sure our release will, you know, unfairly get some as well. Um, and I think it is unfair. For some reason, some people think that if you're a YouTuber, it's a terrible idea to be releasing a fragrance uh, because apparently it's just not right. I'm not sure why people don't like the idea. I think it actually, the internet has put mainstream retail on a back foot because a lot of more passionate people that are going into the niches that they love are creating better products. And I think actually the internet is the future. And I think having affordable niche brands from the internet are something that's gonna be great in the upcoming days. Now, of course, some YouTubers still can release bad fragrances. However, I think it's still a very good thing overall. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments down below and let's get started. Yves Saint Laurent Kouros. It received 3.73 out of 5 on Fragrantica. So this review is interesting. So to summarize a few reviews, it smells like Irish spring over an old man's nuts, anal sex, urinal cakes, your own nuts and body odor, which is an example in this video where I think it's extremely unfair. I think Kouros is definitely a polarizing scent. Some people love it, some people hate it. I think, personally, it's a 10 out of 10 masterpiece, actually. Uh, I think it's a really great fragrance. It's made by Pierre Boudon, who made Green Irish Tweed and Cool Water. But I do feel like it does have that iconic 80s style. It's barbershop, clean, fresh, but at the same time, it does have dirty, fecal, civet in here. It's got some animalic notes that makes it a very interesting fragrance to smell. I think it's iconic and I think, you know, the brand must still sell it for a reason. It probably still sells very well for them. It's definitely got an old school vibe to it. I kind of feel like it is from that era in the 80s when everyone smoked and when colognes were just much more potent. This would have been very strong. Like fragrances like this and Cool Water, I feel like would have masked over a cigarette scent that someone would have. I feel like a very serious, edgy, handsome, cool guy who smokes uh, and you find him in, in the smoking area of some seedy pub would be wearing something like Kuros, which makes it great in my opinion. It has so much character. I'm not saying it very well, guys, but it's one of those fragrances that you can understand why it gets some hate, but I don't think it deserves it. And the performance is fantastic as well. Have you guys tried Kuros? What do you think? Does it deserve the rating that it has on Fragrantica? Jeremy Fragrances, Fragrance One, Office for Men. It has a rating of 3.36 out of five on Fragrantica. Would have been a solid fragrance in the designer category, same league as Dior Sauvage, nothing more, nothing less. Unfortunately, it's too expensive to be relevant and recommended. Jeremy literally said it cost him $5 for this. I wouldn't spend over $30 on this weak synthetic mess. And it's been said to be compared to Hannah Montana Disney, as well as Fairyland Loop Emoji. Hmm. Now, I know why this got hate initially. Um, you know, this had a high price tag. There was some controversy as to how this was put out there by Jeremy. It's the first brand that he made, probably the, you know, the first major YouTubers brand out there. So it's, this is very, you know, important in YouTube history, Offers for Men. Now, is it a weak fragrance? No, absolutely not. This is a very strong synthetic fragrance. It is synthetic. I would actually say that this compares to minimalist perfumes like the eccentric molecules releases like Molecule 01 and Molecule 02. It knows what it's trying to do. It's trying to be very mass appealing and very long lasting. And it's a very simple fragrance overall. And I think it achieves that. What I get from the fragrance personally is lemon, uh, ambroxan, vetiver, those are the three main notes. So 
it's woody, very synthetic, very loud, long lasting. This is the kind of fragrance that does get you compliments and it is gonna last a very long time. So I think it achieves what it wants to, but I feel that the issue is of course the price. I've always said in previous videos, if Jeremy half the price of this fragrance, I think it would be a great purchase. It's not, it doesn't smell challenging and niche enough in my opinion, but it is very pleasant. I think Date for Men remedies this, it has more complexity and character, but Office for Men is a bit too simple. I feel like it's a backbone of fragrance and needed a bit more, but hey, overall I think it probably gets too much hate simply because Jeremy, <laughs> you know, how Jeremy released it. I, I don't know, I feel like people aren't being as objective as they could be in the reviews. What do you guys think? Do you think Office for Men deserves a rating that it got on Fragrantica if you've tried this. Parfum de Marley's Calan. It got 3.67 out of 5 on Fragrantica, which is a very low score for a Parfum de Marley fragrance. I own a few Parfum de Marley fragrances and I love the house, but this one is horrid to the nostrils. Unpleasant mix of spices, black pepper, and a dirty sour bl blood orange. Luckily, I just had a sample. Unpleasant to say the least. Now, it's a bit ironic that I used to own a bottle of this and I've uh, subsequently give, <laughs> given it away. However, I think it does get an unfair treatment. I actually smelled the fragrance, you know, when it first came out, so I didn't know about any reviews or anything. I just smelled it in, I think it was Harrods, and I actually really liked it. I thought it had a lot of character. It's, you know, with fresh fragrances, it's very easy to be generic and use the same notes that everyone else uses. I feel like it's, it's more tricky with fresh fragrances, but Calan stands out. Apart from the Marley created a unique signature that has a very challenging opening. And I think that opening from the black pepper, I think that's the main issue. This fragrance, I feel like could have got more love and more, you know, purchases if it wasn't for that black pepper note. It's very potent, challenging. Some spicy fragrances go too niche, too realistic, and then end up having this sort of food cabinet smell to them. It smells like your kitchen is attacking you and attacking your nostrils. But overall, I think it's an interesting fragrance. It keeps bringing you back for more. It becomes more appealing in the dry down, in my opinion. It feels more warm in a nice spicy way with more vanilla is what I got. The blood orange is pleasant, it's unique. It, get, it adds character to the fragrance. It's very intense, very enticing in its own unique way. I feel like a, a man who's very serious, very focused on business, focus on the numbers and uh, doesn't, you know, deviate from his targets is going to be the kind of person who wears something like Calan. Going to be a polarizing character, but a very determined individual. That's the kind of vibe I got from it. I think it, des it deserves a bit more love, actually, <laughs> um, but I can see why it's hated. <laughs> to be honest, I can, I, you know, I think the rating is fair. It's, it's challenging, but, you know, it's going to be Marmite again. It's like Kuros. What do you guys think? Have you tried Calan? Fragrance Dubois Minuit et Demi. Obviously, this is Demi Rawlings' collaboration with Fragrance Dubois. 3.55 out of 5 on Fragrantica. Nice scent, but for the price, I would expect more. Lasts well, but is a skin scent as I believe it was intended. So, Minuit et Demi, um, it has a very nice opening. I think my, the opening was my favorite part about this fragrance. It is essentially a nice, smooth gourmand scent. It adds, for me, I remember the scent being very cardamom heavy. The cardamom was the best bit in the opening with sort of like a chocolate, caramel, boozy concoction mixed together, but very well balanced, not overly sweet. It's a, a good kind of gourmand in that way. The scent was beautiful. For me, what I did not like was the performance and the price that Demi was asking for, or what Fragrance Dubois was asking for. Fragrance Dubois, do better scents in general, in my opinion. I think this was one of their weakest out there. It had a beautiful opening, but it goes to the skin extremely quick. And for me, the longevity was maybe four to six hours. So for a 250 pounds fragrance, something like that, it was an expensive fragrance. It's, I felt like it was not worth the price. And I felt that it was not fragrance to was best work by any means. So I sort of do feel like it deserves the hate, but you might like the kind of scent profile. If you don't mind reapplying a scent like that, something comforting you want to wear in the cold weather, it's not a terrible fragrance, but I think the rating is appropriate, honestly, in, on Fragrantica. What do you guys think? Have you tried Demi Rawlings' fragrance? Next up, Paco Rabanne's Phantom. That's right, the annoying robots. It has a 3.28 out of five on Fragrantica. Wow, that is low. Uh, this is an interesting summary. Symbolic for what goes wrong in the fragrance industry. 
A lot of new releases are like Phantom. No love for nothing. And I think that sums up Phantom pretty well, actually. It got a lot of hype, a lot of gimmicks in this packaging, being, I don't know, a little scanner robot on the bottle itself, which is cool, but the, um, you know, the main feature being the, the juice inside the bottle was a bit lackluster. Uh, so a new line from Paco Rabanne, you know, it's a big brand, it's made iconic scents like One Million as well as Invictus. You'd expect something great from these guys. And Phantom really did fall short. It has a very bright opening with lavender and lemon, very clean, uplifting, and then goes to this very powdery, sweet vanilla. The issue is, is most of its duration, it smells like laundry detergent. And I don't think the blend was done smoothly at all. It's got good performance in fairness, six to eight hours. It can be versatile. As that reviewer said, it's generic. I don't see why anyone should recommend that fragrance. Maybe if it's your first fragrance, you're a teenager, you might like it. I think a very happy-go-lucky, easy-going teenager would enjoy it. Overall, though, I can't recommend it personally. I think the blend is clumsy and it's a disappointing scent from a big brand. It's okay that they went purely mass appealing. I feel like they just wanted to go pure mass appeal, clean, easy to like. There are more mass appealing scents out there and I still feel like it should have had more character. The bottle itself has so much character, but the scent is not matching. So one million is still very mass appealing, but has a lot of character as does Invictus and all its flankers as well. I think it deserves the hate and the rating that it got. You guys may agree or disagree. If you've tried Phantom, let us know what you think in the comments down below. And finally, Dolce & Gabbana's King, the Eau de Toilette, although I'm holding the Eau de Parfum. So the Eau de Toilette got 3.49 out of 5 on Fragrantica. Awful smell, don't buy blind. As much as I wanted to like this, it made me smell like my grandma. So we're talking about the Eau de Toilette here. Powerful advertising campaign, really handsome guy, good for them. I like that the Italian culture was shown off in the brand. The fragrance itself though, how does it compare? I think it actually deserves more love. I quite like it. I like the Eau de Toilette and I think the Eau de Parfum I'm holding here is even better. The Eau de Toilette for me smells like a bubblegum fragrance. It is generic, it's not changing the scene. Yes, again, it's another mass profiting fragrance. That's what they were going for. But I think it smells more appealing than Phantom, for example. And it still lasted quite a long time, at least six hours of Eau de Toilette, eight to 10 hours the Eau de Parfum, which is impressive for a summer fragrance. So a bubblegum opening and then a barbershop green herbaceous dry down later on. I don't think the man who was the model for this perfume is the kind of person I'd imagine wearing this. I imagine a teenager rocking this. Really handsome, fun, loving, laid back, maybe a skateboarder, I don't know, a skater? A skateboarder, is that what the, you, you kids call it? Uh, God, I'm old. Anyways, um, I think that's the kind of person I'd imagine wearing this fragrance. It's bright, fun, easy to like, and I think it does enough differently to be relevant with a great performance as well. I hope you enjoyed this video, guys. What do you think about who should be releasing fragrances? Do you think YouTubers have any right to be releasing a fragrance? I personally think we do. I think it's much better for people who are passionate about fragrances to be putting out products for you guys who love the niche as opposed to these mass, massive conglomerates who don't really care about perfume, they just care about the profit it makes and will end up just copy and pasting the same perfumes over and over. That's why I want to contribute my own brand to you guys because I feel like we can do enough differently to get the fragrance industry out of this rut where it's just copy and paste, bubblegum and Isoe Super and Hedion and the same DNA over and over. So hopefully when you guys get your hands on our fragrance, you see that we can advance things a little bit more. So yeah, we'll see what you guys think. Make sure to check out our other videos guys as well on the highest rated fragrances on Fragranska. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.